Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 14 of my Total War Warhammer 2 Vampire Coast Let's Play as Luther Harkin. Remember, as always, to check the description to find a playlist and any other relevant information, such as the mods I'm using, the music, or my PC specs. Episodes of this series are posted on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and as always, please do consider sharing the series, liking the videos, or commenting to help it grow. Now, in the last episode, we secured another of the Pieces of Eight by defeating Gentleman Jenkins off the coast of Araby with Penny Wake. We also secured 20,000 gold by winning a battle for booty with Luther Harkin. We also progressed Luther's quest for his fractured mind. And our next objective is to sack or raise three different Lizardmen settlements, but we've largely eradicated the Lizardmen out of Lystria, but we have identified three remaining settlements, luckily enough, deep in the jungles of Lustria kind of dotted around the Spine of Sotek. Seems like the Spine of Sotek dwarfs are going to be sort of in our way, so we're basically preparing for a war in Lustria against both of them, while also exploring the mainland of the Old World with Penny Wake. So we've just encountered the Pirates of Sartosa over here, who don't seem to like us very much. No surprise there, apparently nobody does. So, because we've got no friends and they seem to be in a bit of a weak position, their armies seem to be further away, they're in several wars against Bretonians and different uh, factions of the Empire, seems like we're going to be able to strike deep and strike fast into their territories, establishing a bit of a base of operations so that we can then kind of plunge out from here and hit different places. I think it would be a good spot to have. It's also called the Pirate Coast, so, you know, <laughs> I think it makes sense. Uh, but Sartosa probably has unique buildings and stuff we can uh, mess with as well. So, Penny Wake, we're getting five different units here. Two that we've never actually seen before. The Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob with hand cannons. I don't think we've used them before. I think we've encountered them, but not used them. And then Sirenes. So once we get them in battle, we should be able to have a little read about them. Uh, pretty much planning and just waging a war and going straight to Lucini. And then seeing where we go from there. Of course, we've also got our boy Renfield. Don't know why I keep calling him my boy, but I guess he just is. Uh, kind of uh, progressing and traversing the World's Edge Mountains, encountering various factions as we go and various races, ultimately looking to get somewhere up around here and dig for treasure with him. Trying to think of what else we need to be doing. So we need to kind of move Luther back home to get some replenishment. Now, I noticed that he's actually traveling with a vampire fleet captain, who, of course, now I know, can set up pirate coves. Of course, I was really slow off the ball to set up any pirate coves. We've only got one, and we're 80 turns in. Bit of a fail and embarrassment on my part. But now knowing that we can set them up once every 15 turns with one of these agents, uh, we've got two of them. One of them is on a cooldown. They've got seven turns remaining. But Evelyn Dew here uh, is on no such cooldown. So she could definitely go and set up one. So what I was thinking of doing is getting her just a little bit of replenishment here. Not that she really needs it, but next turn, separating her out of the army and going to the Tomb Kings, going to the Kemri territory here. They've got like 15 territories or something in total. And just start, you know, keeping her over here for a few turns to set up some pirate coves this way. And then we'll bring her back to the army um, as we venture deeper into the jungle. So basically, the plan is we'll keep her out there. We'll bring Luther in. Luther can meet up with the other vampire fleet captain that's, you know, roaming the lands this way. And that way, he's always got one with him. And we're kind of managing the cooldowns and rotating them. Because she can definitely do another one up here, right? To this town. And try to get, you know, multiple on the go. We should be able to get one every seven turns on average. Uh, so we should be able to do that. Even more if we started taking them by force, of course. Alrighty. Uh, so that's the plan there. So back here with Lady Greer. She can also move back to our own territory. We want to build up her army because she's going to strike deep in towards the dwarfs and wage a war on them. I'll have to look at the political situation or diplomatic situation and see how that's going to pan out. But I reckon we'll just move her... Yeah, we'll start moving her force Ready. march Get back up to the blood swamps. And Where then we'll just force march back out. Because up there, we get better recruitment options. And we just unlocked buildings for various different cannons and things like that. So maybe we can have a look at what she can get. Speaking of units that we don't have yet, we're about to get the Tomb of First Mates. And in that, we're going to be able to recruit a boarding crew. Now, I don't recognize that unit at all. I think it might be a Grimhammer modded unit. So I'll be just curious to see them, learn a bit more about them, even just... Well, here we go. Zombies controlled directly by a vampire for the most dangerous tasks. Benefit from zombie deckhands mob skill tech. So there you go. So they're kind of like a variant of that. They have their own name, but they benefit from zombie deckhands mobs skills and tech. They can be boosted that way. That's actually a good point. I didn't even think of that uh, with how the modded units would work. 
Of course, we ultimately want to build up towards getting our own Rotting Leviathan and a Necrofex Colossus. Don't think we I really care too much about getting a Death Shriek Terrorized. I'm more interested in getting towards the Death Guard and Death Guard with Pole Arms so we can actually have a decent melee combatant in, uh, in our rosters. All right, that's enough dilly-dallying. Let's just do our upgrades, make sure everyone's moved, and then get going. So this is our Morngul in the south. Wanted to spread more corruption. We could put him in the army, though, as well, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Make him a bit more powerful. He can join uh, Lady Greer down here. Enables frostbite attacks. Sure thing. Go with that. And if we're going to start spreading corruption... Well, see, I don't really plan on taking any towns out this way, actually. So we'll just leave him where he is. Leave him where he is. Admiral. Okay, let's just check again. Oh, yeah, we got to read the next chapter of this interesting story that's popped up in the previous episode. Speaking of the previous episode, just want to say thanks for all the really positive comments they got in that one. Everyone just are saying happy to be back and stuff, so I really appreciate that. I was never going to leave you hanging, but sorry for leaving you, I guess, hanging for a while. Um, I mean, like, I'm not going to leave you hanging as in stop the series completely. Like I said, I'm having too much fun with it, especially now that we're expanding, we're getting to see the whole world. It's a lot more interesting that way. It's just taking a while to get to it. All right. All right, looking good. Also, for our chapter objectives, just to give a bit of a refresher on that, we're only missing one, the Curse of the Sea Mist. We could, we could do it any time, really, just enact that. And as long as we maintain having 10,000 in the bank, all of these are going to stay uh, ticked. So we get a big windfall of money when it's done. Let's actually see how much. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. So we'll get 8,000 when we raise or sack six different more settlements. So that's going to be... One, two, three, four, five, possibly six, if the Hunts Marshal doesn't get to it too fast. So perfect. But even that, yeah, and then we can occupy these zones. You don't have to raise or sack them. That actually works out great. If the Hunts Marshal does end up taking them, probably just end up going to war with him, start occupying some of these things ourselves. Probably. Um, but there is going to be, if th that means there won't be enough Lizardmen, so we'll have to go venture north to Mazdamundi, who I assume is still up there. Uh, let's just see then as well. Anything left to click? Not really. All right, let's have a little read of that story because I am curious as to see where it goes and what we end up with. And then we'll move on. This one isn't as long as the first part. The Adventures of Blood and Silver Attilian Trick. So this is in quotes. Okay, Attilian Smuggler taught me this trick. Now, this is where the bottle of best Bordello goes. The guards will search behind here, find it, and confiscate it. That's what we want, because it means they won't find the 12 bottles we have hidden under here. And if they find those, all is not lost because they will be so pleased with themselves that they won't even bother searching over there, where there's 24 bottles. <laughs> the captain walked up and down the modified fishing boat, explaining where the various items had hidden to the assembled crew who, despite not having, work, uh, despite not having a working brain between them, were quite impressed. The captain was, of course, quite pleased with their little scheme, but... Then one of the one men in the crowd put his hand up. The captain sighed. Yes, Mr. Gibbs. Sorry to interrupt, Captain, but um, won't the crew arouse more suspicion since they are... Right at that moment, the arm of one of the deckhands fell off, causing the captain to remember that her crew were all effectively waterlogged corpses. Yeah, I think we will need to find some warmer bodies for this one. The vampire sighed. Mr. Gibbs, I've already got a few willing mortals on the payroll, so I suggest you stick to playing with cadavers, lest you want to end up as one. Clear? The truth was that she didn't have a living crew lined up for this job, or really knew many mortals to begin with, but wasn't going to let her pet necromancer outsmart her, even if he did have a point. Alright, I'm loving this. I love this little side story. Sorry that it's broken over multiple episodes. Hope people remember it from previous times. But I want to keep things moving, so I'm not going to go over everything that's happened. All right, that's going to be it. Research. Ah, yes. Let's just begin the command crew's research. And just put some points into that over time. The final category, as it were. And I think that's it. I'm going to keep my camera up towards the Pirates of Sartosa just to see what they kind of end up doing. Alright, interesting. An army just moved right before this, but let's just have a read of this. So we've gotten um, some lore about the zombie pirate gunnery mobs. I guess to do with the hand cannons probably this time. 
And that's the army I was talking about. Let's just have a read of it really quickly. Zombies are clumsy, drudge-like combatants, so more potent forms of magic are usually required to give them the dexterity required to operate firearms. Fortunately for seafaring necromancers, all those who perish on the ocean are touched by the powerful magic of the Galleon's Graveyard, an oceanic realm of the unliving that exists between the, sorry, between the tangible and intangible worlds, sucking in the world's shipwrecked vessels and the drowned corpses of their passengers and crews. That's referring to Galleon's Graveyard, which is right out here, which we've seen briefly at the beginning of the game. <clears throat> it's where Count Noctilus resigns. And we've got a non-aggression with him, but we still could never get trade. Anyway, the weapons of those reanimated from the depths may be rusted and sodden, but many zombies cling to the guns they held so dearly in life and use them with additional help from residual muscle memory. Wielding a shabby collection of black powder weapons long past their best, the zombie pirate gunnery mob appear to gain a small spark of satisfaction they enjoyed in life through the random discharge of noisy, indiscriminate firepower. I think we've read that before, but it's actually really well written. Alright, zombie pirate deckhands. We'll skip this one. It's the kind of same thing. We've re read it kind of before. Sirens. This is the one I want to read them. In the dark, dingy taverns of filthy, pirate-infested places like Sartosa, tales are told of the ethereal horrors that haunt the most cursed corners of the oceans. The Vampire Coast is the most notorious of such places, and around its perilous shores and rocky outcrops where many a galleon has met its end, there lurk the ghostly sirens. With howls that can turn even the bravest men stark white, spearing their souls like a lance through the heart and causing them to die of shock, they are like the tomb banshees of the old world, tortured souls of evil sorceresses who fear crossing the void to face whatever punishment awaits them for their malevolence. A single sirene is a horrific thing to encounter, but it is not unheard of for the necromantic lords of the sea to bind them into terrifying groups to serve their nefarious purposes. It's pretty cool. We'll see them in battle soon enough, and we should be able to read even more about them once we see them. Get some close-ups and zoom in on them. Sea dog. There they are. Armor-piercing melee, ethereal, enthralling attacks. This unit's melee attacks stay the hand of those who are on the receiving end. That's kind of like that other unit we had, isn't it? The one with the, yeah, the stagger shot. Like it knocks back any monster in its track. Sounds similar. In a way. 223 upkeep. These guys are 144. They're fairly expensive. Now, the interesting thing here is that army. Ooh, we can get a little taste of the dwarves here. Tempting as is. They seem to have triple gold chevron experience. You'll notice that they're missing on certain icons, but that's because they've got a question mark on them. We don't necessarily know their true nature, but it seems obvious that they're probably all chevroned out of their minds. Black Buckthorn is level si is number six on the infamous pirates chart. Now, we're not at war with him. Black He's just passing thunder. us by. I reckon we're not ready yet. We don't really have the armor-piercing damage in this arm army needed to kind of take on the dwarves, especially at the triple experience level. So I'm... You know, yes. not yet. Tempting as it is. I think we might wait one one or two more turns and then go to Lucini. Or we can start raiding, actually. The world. I don't see why not. Do we gain replenishment? No. We do gain a thousand gold, though, which is pretty tempting. But no, we'll just stay um, replenishing just for another turn or two. And then go to Lucini. Or we could just go straight to Merigliano, actually. Yeah. I'm actually not too familiar with where that town is. I wonder is it owned by Skaven? Let's go adventuring. Surely if we follow one of the roads, we'll find it. I'm just wondering if we zoom out, could we see it? Yeah, I've got no idea. No idea where it is. Sorry for those who probably know, but... I have to find it the old-fashioned way. Can't click it. Settlement's yet to be discovered. I'm seeing a lot of corruption out this way, though. I'm assuming it's over there. Interesting. All right, we'll just go back into encampment. The great thing is we can just keep replenishing and moving as we go, so no big problem. Now, Luther, my plan here. Let's break out Evelyn Dew. See you later. <laughs> replenishing troops. Establishing pirate coves are cheaper. Let's go with that. My madness is not weak. And he's going to be basically full strength, so we need him to head towards... Well, ultimately, we want him to kind of come down around this way. So we'll maybe cross through the um, the ruins. And we'll just keep him in regular stance. Just get him to his uh, replenishment, then force march afterwards. Although, not 
fully convinced it actually affects that, but oh well, whatever. Uh, yeah, and Lady Greer can come up as well. Cool. Look at our lovely corrupted jungles. Feels so good now. What do we have here? We still have the Blessed Dread, Ca um, Lockyer Felhart. He's out there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. I don't know where. Maybe stuck down here. We never actually checked. Be kind of tempting to see. Is he just on the edge of the map or something in a little uh, horde? Captain, All right. Anything else to do? I don't think so. Let's just quickly have a look once over of our buildings. All good. And Renfield. So keep moving up the mountains. And then we have Beatrice Amstrel, who should be able to get to... Yeah, if we just pop her here and we start digging, we should be able to find the treasure here. Mission successful. What did we get? A thousand gold. Not at all worth it. Considering her upkeep is 428, these are pitiful, pitiful treasures. But, you know, whatever. It's extra money. And we're clearing off the... Clearing off the... Um, what do you call them? Treasure maps. So this is perfect, actually, because she needs to go back north. And we'll have a look for whatever one's up here. We'll read that later as we move up here, because we're going to set up a pirate cove at the Temple of Kara in, I believe, six turns. Captain on deck. So let's see, she's already got that pirate cove thing. So we know that we're going to put her in an army as well. So we'll do replenish troops and spirit leech. For when she links up with Luther, then. So that's actually going to work out quite nicely. As he kind of comes in, she'll pop up here, maybe get that thing, come back down, join, and they'll start fighting on a two, uh, two pronged attack into the Order. dwarf's territory. So Lady Greer, yeah, we've moved her. Everything's done? I think that's it. Hero not moved. Uh, he's still spreading corruption. How much is there down here? 61%. Yeah, just stay down here, I guess, for a while. Right, well that was pretty interesting. So we just saw really quickly there, Gormog Radher. I think one of the old greenskins that we fought outside of the Dark Elves territory is actually just attacked and sacked the lizard men up here, which is pretty annoying because if they raise them, then that's going to take one of those towns that we need off the board, as it were. Just so damn unfortunate. One, two, ah, and the Hunts Marshal has taken that one. So it does look like we're going to ultimately have to go north. There's not enough down here. But let's just clear our backstop while we're here. Why not? You know? Why not? I mean, we could back out now and choose to just sail up towards... How's the Monday? I wish I had an... Oh, I do have an agent, actually. Yeah, we have Beatrice. We could head up there and see where is Mass the Monday, you know? And how many Lizardman factions are up there or territories? And are there any... There should be some over this way. But that would take a long time to get to. I don't want to be stuck on this chapter forever. Actually, it's not the chapter, is it? No, it's the it's Luther's personal quest. So I guess I don't mind waiting too much longer on that. All right, anyways. Um, so let's just get... We're in the territory now to start recruiting. And that building's done, right? Yeah. So we can get those... Um, whatever those new guys were called again. There they are. Boarding crew. We can only have four of them. Actually limited. It's like they count as like a monster almost. There's 120 in the unit. Hmm. Hybrid fire while moving, aquatic and capable. I wonder what quite capable means. A couple unique abilities are bound spells at its disposal. Midnight Cutlass. 100% armor piercing missile damage. 250% armor missile damage. Jesus. 10,000 ability to recharge. So it seems like you can only do that once. It'll lock all other abilities for this unit when you use it. Oh, wow, this is quite different. So you can either lock them into... I see. You'll either lock them into being melee or missile, essentially. Hmm. All right, yeah, let's get let's get a couple of them. Two, I think, is enough, just at the beginning here. Uh, what else could we deal with? We're actually quite low on guns. I mean, those two guns units there... Am I mad? Why can't we get the uh, long-range guys? 
don't actually have the building that lets us get uh, the handguns, the ones that are like armor piercing. We have these ones, the short range. I want the long range, guys. Like global pool. Hmm. I guess I don't have the building. I know I have it on Luther's ship. I guess that must be what I'm thinking of. I am the pilot king. I suppose we could just link up and do a bit of a transfer. Okay. Sorry for taking a while. I was just thinking that through. So essentially, if we just free up some space, go with Luther, and then choose to recruit. Yeah, there it is. Sorry, I'm just crazy. Local horde, I guess. Oh, so his slots are actually different than the... Oh, right. Okay. Three of those. So those three are going to combine into this. Yeah, we can recruit one more here. So, um... We have the with a lot of ogres, ogres, and then we've got the Mornfang cavalry. We've got two mortars. Maybe we'll add a, a unit of carronades. Let's see how that shakes out. All right, two armies are basically together. We're gonna just push them in and go wild. Force march, run through the ruined territories and go straight into the dwarfen territories. It's tempting to just sack them. I guess we'll sack and raise if we can. Just make huge money and uh, get our experience up for Lady Greer as well. Okay, uh, so let's just see. Yeah, we're still going to move with Penny Wake. I'll try to go a bit quicker now. That's a different town altogether. It's so interesting. <laughs> I just don't know where I am in this world. So that means that it was probably this way. Mirigliano. Maybe right around here. Because it'd be great if we could just settle straight away without having to fight. Myrmidons. Myrmidons. This is owned by the Golden Order. Balthazar. Hmm. Okay. Keep an eye on it. Let's keep going north. Nashrak's Lair, owned by Karak Kadrin, the Slayers. Alright, cool. Um, don't think there's anything else to do then. Tim the Stash is still waiting. Evelyn do. We'll just keep moving her. Just set her to go straight out here. 4,600 to establish a pirate cove. Ooh. Oh, but she doesn't... It doesn't matter. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Kill I think. Seems killed. like it. It's only armies that get affected by attrition, not single a uh, agents. Alright, it's in the turn. Loyalty level low. Oh, crap. I didn't actually think about that. That's Lady Greer. Man, that would shake things up if we had to end up fighting her. Carronades. Oh, we never actually got a little lore about them. Many ships of the undead fleets are equipped with broadside cannons known as carronades or smashers, so named for the quick splintering work they make of even the toughest ship hulls when brought within range. They first incapacitate their target before the zombie hordes board, mur murder, and loot according to their master's will. As they sail off, uh, another round of broadside cannon fire sends the ransacked ship's uh, ship and its blood-soaked decks to a watery grave. Carronades are comparable in size and powered to the great cannons used in the field by the Empire, capable of causing a similar scale of devastation upon living targets and even reducing solid walls to rubble from afar. As with the armies of the Empire, undead pirates drag their artillery onto the battlefield with the hisses and cracks of smaller handheld black powder weapons commonly pr uh, preceded by the thundering booms of carronade fire. A mass exodus. Our new citizens are not entirely pleased, it would appear. Governance by an unliven force is not sitting entirely well with many of... <laughs> I find it really difficult to read the ones where they put it in like the kind of English accent or whatever. Governance by an unliving force is not sitting entirely well with many of the populace, many of whom are living in a state of constant fear and dread. Due to this, mass migration is now occurring. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that accent was. Anyway, if I heard it, I could do it. Um, all right, negative 20 growth, all provinces. Goddamn. So she oh, is well, level four you. loyalty. Not too bad. I just want to see what does she need to get her loyalty up. I smell. From constricting pirate coves, hmm. Winning battles, I think, helps as well. 
We can always do that curse thing to boost it. All right, um, so we'll just do another transfer with Luther. Exchange those really high tier units and get these ones back in return. Uh, I guess like that. So we'll still have one to train, I suppose. Sure. Yeah, it's tempting to take those two you boarding will. crews and give them to Luther, actually. But anyway, we'll just move on with this. I don't want to do more exchanges. You can mess with your um, movement rate. So just start moving west. Those, Yeah, it'd be great if we could fight those greenskins that are attacking those lizard men as well. Oh my god, I totally forgot about Luther's ship. We could be building all the time. So let's just get moving with him. Uh, so, this will increase our movement range to 30%. Seven grand for that. That's quite expensive. So, we're going to go from negative six upkeep to negative ten. I'll take that because that'll pay off in the long run. Uh, we can get other animated hulks, rotting Prometheans, Sirenes, and then all the way up to rotting Leviathan. Death Guard. Maybe it'd be good to get him his own spar deck. Although I always feel like the economic ones. So we're done with all the economic ones. That's done. What about this? A dart launcher. 12 growth just to get this one. Melee defense 2 when defending. Missile strength 5 for Carinade, Mortar, and Queen Bass. And then it's just one growth after that every time. Or you could go with the Black Coffin. Casualty replenishment rate 10%. Vampiric corruption 7. Income from all buildings in all regions 5%. Uh, yes. So I guess because we have the growth. 14 growth is quite a lot. Where do we actually see our growth? 17 population surplus, it says on the left. Sweet. Hmm. I just want to read this one as well. Harpoon launcher. So by the time we get to the end, required to achieve campaign victory. Oh, wow. Infamy, hero recruit rank, defense, missile strength, and army ability. Nah, let's go with the black coffin. Within this ornate sarcophagus of the blackened oak, Harkin plots his return. Perhaps a name for an even greater vessel to come. Awesome. So you're going to take one turn as well. Ah, the Rotting Prometheans with the gunnery mob on top we could get also. Uh, I don't want to waste the money. What about this one? Casualty replenishment rates increased even further. Uh, oh, it allows recruitment of your boy Necrofax. Yes, let's get that. Alright, money is falling down swiftly as we build up greater and greater units. Oh, this is nice. So... We can skip along through here and find this goddamn Miragliano town. Although it says it's faster to go this way, so I guess we'll go that way. Don't linger. Gain your replenishment all the time, even if it is only piecemeal. Okay, don't need to move him. Settlement upgrade available. Uh, sure. Mangrove Coastal upgrade first. Alright, interestingly, there's actually like a lot of wars kicking off. Uh, Hexodal has declared war on Tyrannoch, just like a high elf faction in Oath 1. War declared between Kemri and the Bloody Spears and Kemri and Grimgore's Ard Boys. So two different greenskins they've just gone to war with. And we also saw our personalities change for Luther. I just want to check that really quick. Uh, where is he? He's here. Alrighty, let's see what he's all about now. He is the narcissist again. Okay, I actually kind of like that one because we get Vargeist, Van Geist Revenge, the big uh, ship spell. It's pretty cool. Lady Jim Hawkins, our boy. Let's see. Missile strength, 6% for him. Reload reduction, gun sight. Ammunition for all artillery. 2% missile strength for artillery units in the army. Anything for in the army, I think I'll go with first. Then we'll boost him later. So that's going to go up from 2% to 4. Nice. So it was 0, then 2, then 4. Could have done training, actually, but that's fine. Um, all right, let's keep going. Oh, no, I separated him out of the army. I always do that. My bad. Move. 
we'll pop him in next turn. There we go, he's fine. Alright, Luther has just got his building built. Special deck. 10% replenishment rate, 7 vampire corruption, and 5% income increase from all buildings. So I think we were at 1200 income at the end of that turn. Now we're at 2000. That could be because of that building. I am listening. Uh, we could search the runes as we pass by. Is there any points? Nah, leave it. I want to just get up here and get involved. Ah, uh, yes, and we can bring uh, Tim the Stasher up now as well, just to check if they've got any army lying in wait down here. All right, let's just check in on Penny Wake. I have sailed the world. Overland. There we go, there's Miragliano. So if there's Skaven there, we're going to fight him. But we're just out of reach for this turn. Your there are some Skaven right on the border there. What the hell? <laughs> There's like five of them. <laughs> Little agent wars going on. Between Wood Elves and Skaven. Ahoy! Considering Skaven Blight, the town is right there. Looks really cool, actually. I would assume it's not just a town sitting that's raised that no one's occupied. I would assume there is something there. In fact, Skaven Corruption would maybe give that away. It usually does. Yeah, it's 47%, so seems likely. I guess if the army's too big, I might have to leave it, and then it was all a big kind of waste. But we can move back down and then go back for um, the uh, Lucini small town. Sorry for taking so long with that, but hey, we're exploring. I don't know the map inside out. Forgot to move Renfield last turn. Let's just keep moving him up this way. Evelyn Dew is on her way. Just can do that now. Establish a pirate cove. Oh, she's like one turn away. Fuck Unfortunately, she's right head. outside, but just not close enough. Alright, so a lot of maneuvering, but we're almost there. Hopefully people don't mind and understand as these things take time. Um, but we're finally almost... Yeah, it's just two turns away, I think, from being in position of taking out the, the spine of Sotek Dwarfs. Let's see what's going on over there. All right, Aminar has attacked Bordelo. That was all we had, other than just getting some construction done, a Black Powder Depot, and Dead Pirate's Haven. Cool, all right, so. Black Powder Depot is gonna give us access to Deck Gunners, a pretty powerful unit. Yes. Definitely would be good to have them against Dwarves, so we'll just keep moving. We will get there. Right, we are in their territory now. Big full stack right there, looking right at us. A lot of uh, gold chevrons I'm seeing. We do have two armies, so I'm feeling pretty good about that, I suppose. Oh, well, I did plan on splitting them up, but I suppose for an actual stack v stack battle with a town next to it, it'd be good to have it, you know, everyone, everyone there. Ah, they do have an army down here. See, I was a bit worried that they might end up sending this one to the east and attack us at Oixel don't really have a contingency for that other than just attacking here and then giving chase or going running back that way with one of them all right let's see what's going on here so there are skaven here it doesn't unfortunately tell me which faction let's just say declare war So it's Clan Scryer. Ugh. I think ultimately I hate to be annoying, but I'm going to go change my mind and just go straight for the Vampire Coast because, uh, for the Pirates of Sartosa, because that's just a better territory to hold. It's vampiric, and then we can build and launch an attack after that. Obviously, I want to fight Skaven and Dwarfs at some point, so we'll come back. I'm not going to do that right away when they don't, like, hate us. They're, like, one of the only factions that doesn't hate us. I'll say sorry, and we'll be back later. So I'm just going to straight up Force March out of here. Actually, no, just... Yeah, Force March out of here. I don't want to bother them. It was pretty obvious, but I guess... I didn't know until I kind of got up there and saw Skaven Blight that that was the situation. So we'll just go straight into Lucini. Maybe if we have the strength, then push down to Sartosa itself. Nice big 10-slot settlement for us. Uh, let's set up that Pirate Cove now as well. 
Getting quite low on money, actually. We'll Alright, Pirate Cove set up. Income generated 300, plus 23%. Or income from the local settlement's income. We'd only get 61. That's pretty low. I'm just a bit confused. It says you get 50% of the local income, right? So that's 461 is their income, so we get 230 plus, I assume, 61. So it's 290. So it's better to get this then. All right, we'll go with the Smuggler Cove. I guess you got to look for settlements where you know how much money they're making. That probably would have been a good idea for me to keep track of. Next time. She's going to take 15 turns to get her cooldown back. The next one is over here at the Temple of Kara. 0% chance because she still is on cooldown. Is she? Two more turns, so almost there. Ah, actually, we can get the uh, pirate treasure. We know that somewhere over here, not all wonders are created by the gods themselves. Some are mortal creations. Well, it's obviously this then, isn't it? Hunger. Alright, cool. Alright, next turn. Luther and Lady Greer, we're going to start a war with the Spine of Sotak Dwarfs. Just because. <laughs> and that should be a nice big battle to round out the episode, actually. Let's get uh, some more money here, and we can get the income. Nice. Alright, let's end it. Alrighty, I'm back. I just went to the bathroom really quickly as well, so I kind of missed the turn itself. So, Confederation between Grimgore's Ard Boys and the Bloody Spears. So, both of them were at war with Kemri, so they've merged. It's probably a big merger, actually. Speaking of mergers, how about that Activision Microsoft merger? It's insane. It's not even a merger, it's an acquisition, but still. Anyway, Military Alliance negotiated Torgovin and Talson. Talson and Clan Spittle. Faction encountered Kreis, the White Lions of Kreis. Rank gained Evelyn Dew, rank 10. Wasn't I thought she was like rank 4. Wow. Establish the Pirate Cove, make that cheaper in future. Alright, cool. Um, I'm just wondering, do I send her back or do I just leave her here for a few turns to... Is there... Tr actually, there's treasures out this way as well. Uh, no, there's not. I thought there was one in the very bottom right of the map. I guess not. I could have sworn there was. Well, either way, she's got 15 turns to burn. Maybe I could send her up to join the armies up here. Alright, so we should be starting our war now. Oh, crap, I didn't see where they went. They've moved. Damn it, man, that always happens. When you're about to have a really cool battle, the game just, like, does not let you have them. They move armies <laughs> away from, like, strategic defensive points. Interesting. All right, well, let's just go for it anyway. Don't know where they are. I'm gonna move in with Lady Greer first to give her the experience. Spinosotech dwarfs there at war with the Bone Clever's tribe, and that's it. By Grimnir's axe, you rue the day for this outrage. A close defeat. All right, it's our first time actually seeing the dwarfs in battle. My madness is not weak. And it is a walled settlement, so this is a siege. Pyrrhic victory. Says we won't lose anything. I'm fighting it out, though. How can you not? We've got the artillery to blast down the walls and just push in. So let's go. I always love this kind of thing where we're fighting in a Lustrian jungle against dwarves. But I guess it is actually a dwarven ruins settlement built into a mountain. So that's kind of interesting. I thought maybe we'd see some lizardmen stuff in here. Perhaps. But I guess not. They are in the mountains. Makes sense. Let's gamble. Hey, there we go. 33, feeling good. 
All right, uh, let's try to be a bit quicker. So my boy, Luther, is coming in from here, from the back. We want to take out as many towers as we can early on. I didn't actually mer do the thing I normally do, which is switch, you know, who has what artillery to fire on where. Um, I reckon we'll go for the left side. It's brighter. <laughs> so let's do that. Alright, the mob can take the hits, hopefully. We also have our boarding crew. Let's have a look at them real quick. Oops. Oh, they look a bit a bit more um like they've got higher prestige armor. And they've got little shields strapped to the backs and stuff than the regular ones. These guys don't have much color on them or anything, you know? bit more standard gear, whereas these guys look like they're ex-Empire or something, you know? Cool. We uh, oh yeah, I could have the animated hulks take a bulk of the hit as well, maybe, at first. Pull them back after a moment. Although, we need them for their armor piercings. Maybe not. I'll keep them back. Ogres with dual weapons. We need them as well, big time. Again, these guys have no experience. Just put anything with no experience at the front. They can take the hits. And then we've got Penny Wake herself. Oh, sorry, not Penny Wake. Excuse me. Lady Greer. And then Jim Hawkins. Now, more are going to come in from here, and we'll get them trained on whatever wall or tower we can immediately. Uh, I'm just going to move these ones forward a bit. Everyone's in range? Actually, no. That would have been a... Quite a mistake. All right, are we ready? I think so. God, we've got immediate things being hurled at us. All right, Luther's in. Now they've got artillery as well. 41% damage, love to see it. I feel like the music has just completely gone off. Alright, the next lines are coming in. Damn it, the artillery is not going to come to last, I guess. It's interesting, so it's like a green skin towers and stuff. Dwarf and occupied. I think I would have imagined dwarves would take that down fairly quick. <laughs> wow, our guys are being wrecked. What's killing them? Just the enemy tower, tower fire and stuff? Can't heal them, can we? Nope. The mortars are actually just get off the map. Get off the map. You're gonna you're gonna die. Ah man, they're gonna die. They went so quickly. I guess they pushed forward and I didn't realize. I don't know why though. I told them to attack the tower. Alright. The other mortars and Queen Bess is in now, so let's give the order. It should go a lot better now. These guys can run away as well. Maybe they'll make it. That doesn't matter if they don't. I'm more upset that the mortar went. Alright, 74% on that one. Looking good. Have to start firing on the left now in a second. Alright, that tower is down. One on the left and one further out on the left as well then. And then we're still getting fired on from something in the distance. It's just... Is it the... Yeah, it's the rock lobber. Okay. It looked like... They look really small, but they're actually... I guess big projectiles. So let's get going with them. Run forward, start breaking open the gates if we can. You can actually break open a part of the wall at some point as well. All 
Alright, how's it going? These two, are they gonna get off the map? No, they're way too slow. Look how slow they are. Oh my god. If they just get to that white line, they live. <laughs> sort of. This might be a terrible idea for these guys as well. Sorry, I'm not playing very smart at all. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Running straight towards like a bunch of quarrelers and missile fire and stuff. Not a good idea. Alright, that tower is done as well. Let's get that final tower down. It's going to reduce the pressure that's on us. And then we can kind of form up a little bit better and push forward and break open some parts of the wall. Don't have anyone to heal either. The previous person we had that could heal is uh, Evelyn Dew that was out setting up pirate coves and stuff. Oh, we actually have some units coming out. Start lining up our boys as well now. Alright, the towers are down, finally. Okay, so now it's just walls. And they can't really hit us too much in terms of range. And we have our Queen Bess. Which is actually taking a beating, somehow. Let's pull that back as well. Oh my god, it's super far forward. Why does that keep happening? The range of it is huge. I don't know why it's moved forward. I'm just this flipped or something. Look at it, it's taking a beating. Neglect on my part. I'm very sorry. I don't know why they both... I mean, the mortar as well. I checked for range, and yet they still went forward. I must have done something horribly wrong. I'll tell you one thing I could have done. It's just turned on guard mode. That would fix that problem. Alright, start cracking that wall. Let's have a little zoom in though and enjoy the scenes, even though we're getting peppered. So much we can do until we break open the wall and then we'll get moving forward. That rock lover, I'm going to be very intrigued to see how many kills it's gotten. There's two of them, I think. firing back. Alright, let's get that Queen Bess firing up on these guys as well. Queen Bess, fire over here. There's a big blob of them over there. What's the wall at? 32% damage. 35, 38. I'm uh, very sorry. I have to pause it. Rosie is outside. She can't get in. Back in a sec. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, for those who don't know, Rosie is my girlfriend. <laughs> All right. Let's continue. Still waiting for that wall to crack. God damn it. My guys are taking a real beating. This is not going well. I don't know what I'm doing. All my gunners just get a shot. They're so important for this battle as well. Alright, I'm going to go forward with animated hulks now. Go forward with the ogres. Hope that the wall is down by the time they get there. Gonna maybe bring the ones that are a little bit higher quality or higher strength in terms of uh, missiles, bring them up behind as well. Mongols as well, bring them out on the left. Got some more guns we can bring on the left. We can also bring the boarding crew, which is supposed to be kind of good. Get Luther to move up, Gunnery White to move up. Okay, a bit more of a plan, yeah? A bit more of a plan of action instead of just sitting back like a my thumb with my ass. <laughs> We're putting the fire back on them. We've lost 800 men. They've lost 100. <laughs> that wall gonna crack any second now. Biggest in Detroit. Biggest in Detroit. Let's go. Alright, 
Alright, we have the Cloud of Shame. That covers up the fact that that wall does not have an animation. <laughs> Let's get in. And then animated hulks to follow. Guys, get in there. Now, see if we can do that somewhere else. The mortars, though, can uh, just fire on actual troops. Right, the monsters are in. Yeah. Armor piercing melee? Sure, just go for them. Why not? They're mercenaries anyway. They're meant to die. <laughs> Animated hulks can circle around somewhat. Let's get Luther in though. He can do some area of effect spells. Oh, crap. There we go. People are moving forward. Let's get those Mourn Gulls in there. We know that they're awesome. Alright, animated hulks circled around the sides here. The ogres are kicking ass. They're doing great. One of them's broken actually, but the other one's killed an entire unit. I can't believe they broke their own 15. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they're doing great. And it's like, oh, actually, not really. <laughs> kind of. Alright, let's throw down our uh, death strike. A death shriek. Sorry, it's not shrike. Shriek. Go, and then do a radius which is over nobody I assume the radius would be bigger man I am so sloppy can't do that on a wall let's move this way then All right moon gulls are coming in next now let's see if I can get Luther to fight their Lord specifically, and then we can also bring in Evelyn. Sorry, it's Lady Greer. I keep forgetting who's who. And do a uh, Spirit Leech. Till you get enough. Alright, so he's been fought as well. Their Lord is under pressure. That was the wrong thing. Whatever. These are firing, but they're probably not going to hit anything. I haven't actually lost too many units. I've just been taking a lot of losses. It's just been uh, embarrassing, to be honest. He's down to half health. Love to see it. Spirit leech that M effort. How far away is she? She's pretty close. She's actually in combat herself now. Against how many? 88. They're mostly on the wall, though, I think. All right, more people are flooding in. Looking good, actually. Looking pretty good. Doesn't seem like we're going to take too many losses from here on out. Some of the ogres have run away again, but whatever. They're cowards. Decimation for them, I think. Decimation. <laughs> and uh, anything else that these guys could be firing on? The mortars? Yep. Let's fire up on them. Carronades have broken a hole in another part of the wall. We could bring in the Mournfang Cavalry that way, actually. Good. These animated hulks that took a bit more damage, they can come in too. Longbeards are great weapons. Armor piercing, charge defense against large. Doesn't sound ideal, does it? Let's get the Mournfangs then to head to the back and go for the Thunderers if they can possibly get in that way. They are being thrown around the place though. It's absolute chaos down on the ground <laughs> for them. Actually, can you cancel that? No. It's gonna go nowhere. It's too far. I forgot that it goes really far back. Well, the Mournfang Cavalry are gonna do their job, which is good to see. And it looks like the uh, Roach Throwers 
are uh, completely abandoned. I was calling them rock lovers. Sorry, that's the green skin version, isn't it? There you go. Good on them. The Moonfang should do well in that fight. It says that they're not really. Oh, there we go. Good, good. Never did use the boarding crew, actually. Not that we're going to use them now, probably, but we're putting them up anyway. And let's do our death shriek thing, our hex death shriek, terror guys shriek here. That's going to lower the, um, just do some direct damage, some armor piercing direct damage to 10 entities per second. Throw down a little shout on them as well. Oh my god. And that's it. That is a GG. All right, little little need to work out my strategy on attacking settlements like that. Just sitting back like that wasn't too bad, but I was annoyed that I lost the mortars and sent the cannons forward by accident. But oh well, a victory is a victory. <laughs> I think ultimately I got very lucky when you think about it that that other army wasn't involved if they were involved and they were all triple chevroned out of their minds and stuff and defending that would have been that would have went way worse <laughs> there basically no one did any damage really except for the grudge throwers they got 500 kills for the two of them which is pretty crazy you know that's like all that was hitting me over and over and over again um Really, I think if I had identified that a little bit earlier and a little bit better, maybe I could have sent Luther in on his terror geist and just landed and disrupted it at least, you know, temporarily. Flew around the side of the map or something. I have to think about that in the future. If we're going against artillery, it's the second time that's happened now where we're just too slow and the artillery, like, cuts us up a lot. So we lost two mortars and we lost two um, zombie pirate deckhands mob, and that's it. Don't really mind the infantry. It's a, it's a bit of a shame losing the mortars. They were triple chevron, which would have been nice to keep. Uh, but I think with tech and things, we might be able to get them at level 2. So not, not a terrible loss either. But still. The ogres made it out, even though they were um, basically decimated and running away. I guess they were fine. We did throw them into the thick of it, but whatever. Alright, GG. So it's going to be a sack from me. I'll take the 10 grand. Uh, we can come back and raise it afterwards. Is treasure and grave. I think, oh, the Sentinels of Zeti. Now, I'll tell you what would be great. Oh, look, they've got two towns there. Excellent. I was going to say, what would be great is if they decide to take this town or something like that, and we can just go to war with them, and therefore we have our three towns. We've got one there and two here. So that's actually, it's still possible, this whole taking three Lizardman uh, settlements. That is totally doable. Um, I'll tell you what, the, it's going to have to wrap it up there because obviously with the battle, the episode's going a bit long. So that's going to be it for this episode. Next one, we're going to be waging a war on the va the Pirates of Sartosa, quickly taking a couple of their towns and then trying to attempt to take the city itself, which is going to be quite difficult. They have um, a pretty strong garrison there. Aranessa Assault Spite's actually right face. here, and she's got two Necrofex Colossi. So they've all my dilly-dallying is now cost us they have armies in the region but I, you know what i'm gonna go for it i think we should still go for it it's about time we give ourselves a bit of a challenge we can handle some big units what she got she oh she has the sartosa free company as well so that's kind of cool that's just some good battles ahead i think over there and over here we have this one dwarven army down here that's I have to see where they go we know that there's another full stack somewhere in the jungles here unless they died i doubt it though i doubt they just die in one battle we wouldn't see them so it's all to play for in Lustria and towards the Pirates of Sartosa. Meanwhile, we are going to uh, uncover treasure. Can we just do that now? Let's do it now. Boom. Horde uncovered another thousand gold. And then next turn she loses this and we can set up another pirate cove. So we, went, we just basically gained like 14,000 gold right there. All right, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you again very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.